Okay, so as I just mentioned, when we have unfactorable quadratics, we only have one option for coming up with our solution. Well, we have two options. We haven't talked about that one yet. That's coming down the pike. But we cannot use the factoring option. But what we're going to look at first today is what does it look like if we can solve it by factoring and what does it look like if we can use this thing called the quadratic formula. Now, you will be expected to know the quadratic formula, okay? However, it's not the first time that you've seen this in this class alone. Now, you may have seen this previously as well, but you should recognize negative b over 2a as in what we used to find the vertex in the last lesson, that found the x value of the vertex, which was also h, which is also the axis of symmetry. And up on the board for a couple weeks now, I've had this plus or minus square root of b squared over 4ac divided by 2a gives us the distance between the axis of symmetry and one of the x-intercepts. Take a look over at the board. You'll see it. It's right over there under general form. You see the plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a gives us the distance between the axis of symmetry and the two x-intercepts. And the reason it's plus and minus is because we take that h value and we either add to it or subtract to it. That splits the difference, right? Because it's the same distance on either side because of our symmetry line. That's the whole idea, okay? So this is just taking all of that and putting it together and we'll continue to kind of review that so that you understand what does this mean? Because if you understand what it means, then it's going to be easier for you to have memorized. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at these questions. And you'll notice that over here for 2, 4, and 6, they are going to be blank over here. And we'll talk about why those are blank in just a second. All right? But let's start with question number one here. And we want to try to solve this factoring-wise. We want to try to solve this using factoring. When I say solve, I mean we're looking for where does the graph cross the x-axis. That's what I'm looking for, x-intercepts, okay? Now, this should be one that you would look at and you'd go, cool, a is equal to 1. That makes this an easy factoring job. I should be able to speed factor this. And so I can jump right to setting up parentheses parentheses equals zero like that. Okay, so we're looking for factors of negative 63 that subtract to give us positive two. What do you guys think? Yeah, seven and nine, right? That should be pretty straightforward, right? Okay, now we know the first terms are going to be x and x. We know our signs are going to be different, one positive and one negative, because that's the only way that we can multiply two numbers and get a negative 63. This comes from our factoring lesson, lesson 6.3, okay? If you're lost already, that's because you didn't pay attention to lesson 6.3. Go back and redo that one, because you need to know how to factor, right? This is why we need it. It's a skill we need to find x-intercepts, right? And then this one, is the 9 going to be positive, or is the 7 going to be positive? The 9 is going to be positive because we want to be left with a positive 2. Okay? And then what we talked about was we're looking for the numbers that will turn either this group or this group into a 0 so that when we multiply by the other group, we end up with an end result of 0. Can you tell me what they are? No, you can't tell me what they are? Okay, negative 9 would work, right? If I put a negative 9 in here and a negative 9 in here, this is going to become zero, right? And this is going to become negative 16. But it doesn't really matter what that is because zero times anything zero. is going to be zero. That's called the zero product property. Now, we could write out the work like this. It's basically like taking each one of these factor groups and setting them equal to zero, okay? For questions like this, I would not expect you to need to write out this work. But this is how you could do it. You set each one to zero and you solve it, right? So over here, I'm going to subtract nine from both sides and I would get X is equal to negative nine. And over here, I'm going to add seven to both sides, right? And I'm going to get X is equal to positive seven. Right? And so again, if I plugged in a positive seven here and here, I'd get positive 16 times zero is going to give me zero. And again, this is the output of the function. These two right here are the input of the function. Input, output, right? So then what we would want are x-intercepts. That's what we're finding. 
right? And all X intercepts are going to have a Y value of zero. That's why the output's always zero, right? Because the Y value is always zero. And we wanna know what numbers go in here. Well, those are the two numbers that we found. One of them is negative nine, and one of them is positive seven. And whatever this graph looks like, we know that it's gonna cross the X axis at negative nine and at positive seven, right? And I mean, we could even get sort of just even a ballpark idea of what it would look like, right? Like for example, is my vertex, like let's say this is, let's just call that negative nine and let's call this positive seven. Is my vertex gonna sit below or above the X axis? It's gonna sit below or above? It's gotta sit below, right? Because A, is equal to one, which makes the vertex a maximum or a minimum? A minimum sits down here, opens up. If it's got to cross the X axis here and here, what's halfway between those points? Well, it's going to be about here-ish, right? And so our vertex is going to be somewhere down here and it's going to look something like that. And we can figure out exactly what it is, but that's not the point of this part of our lesson is, this is what we're looking for to find these x-intercepts. Now, look, that should have been a pretty easy question. This is an easy one. You get this in general form and you go, man, I can speed factor that right there. I shouldn't even need to write out this work and I can find the x-intercepts bang like that. That should take you 30 seconds to do. Take you 30 seconds. Okay. 29 seconds. I got You're slow. That 28. Oh, That's what you should oh, shoot. Oh, oh, oh. Now, look, let's talk about the quadratic formula in terms of this same problem. Okay, all right, now let's talk about general form A, B, and C. So we want to say A equals, B equals, and C equals, and I want you to get that information from this right here. So you write down what does A equal, B equal, and C equal. You write those numbers down right here, ready to go. But, one, two, and negative 63. Yeah? Okay. All right, now, let's write out our quadratic formula here. Here's how, here's how I recommend you do this. If you do this, you won't make mistakes. If you don't do this, you're gonna lose a sign sooner or later, okay? So, quadratic formula, we're gonna just take this right here and we're gonna say x is equal to negative, open parentheses, where we're gonna drop in a b eventually, plus or minus, Nice big long square root sign, and then it's going to be parentheses squared minus four parentheses parentheses, where we're going to drop in B's, A's, and C's, all over two parentheses, where we're going to drop in an A. And since you've identified these three numbers right here, you should easily be able to fill in all of the missing spots. Ready? Go. This is what you should have put in right here. Okay, so let's do a little cleaning up and simplify it. I'm gonna show you the order in which you need to do this. You just follow an order of operations, but this is gonna look like negative two plus or minus the square root of, and then we're gonna do math inside of our radical next. So two squared is what? Okay, right? And then we're gonna do negative four times one, which is negative four, times negative 63. Okay, so positive 252, right? All over 2. All over. X is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 256 divided by 2. Okay, square root of 256. Thoughts on that? Is that a perfect square? It is 16, huh? Okay, it's perfect square. So then this is going to look like x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus what? 16 divided by 2. Now keep in mind that this is two math problems right here. This is negative 2 plus 16 divided by 2. And this is negative 2 minus 16 divided by 2. So we really got to have to set this up into two math problems here. The first one's going to be 
negative 2 plus 16 divided by 2. And the second one is going to be negative 2 minus 16 divided by 2. All right, what's negative 2 plus 16? Uh, say 14. 14 divided by 2 is? And what's negative 2 minus 16? Four <laughs> positive two fifty two. Add them together to get two fifty six. Take the square root. Okay, and then what's negative eighteen divided by two? Negative nine. Negative nine. Do you see it? That's actually Okay. So then that makes our x intercepts again negative nine comma zero and seven comma zero. <laughs> solved by factoring, solved by quadratic formula. Thank you. It should work. It should be the same because we started with the same problem. We're just looking for it in different ways. Well, I don't know. Like that's that becomes the question, right? The question is, is which one of these is easier to do in this case? Pro probably this one. I mean, if you're good at factoring and you're easy, you, you, you see your common factors, then probably that one. But this one works too. And this one works every time oh. without fail as long as you do your math right okay let's do another one okay so let's start with the factoring model version first and you'll notice something here with this one we have a problem what's the problem with this uh, there's no c value okay there's no c value that's part of the problem and the other part of the problem is Zero. It's not set equal to zero because we want x-intercepts and we need a y or an output equal to zero. So let's just move that one over to the other side. And so we're going to get negative x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to zero. And we solved our problem in getting c and our output of zero. Now keep in mind, when we talked about factoring and there was a negative out in front, I said the first thing you need to do is factor out a negative one. Oh, sorry, I didn't write it. My bad. It should be 2x. 2x, there we go. Okay. So if I factor out a negative 1, that's going to get my quadratic to look like that. And this is factorable. Factors that multiply to positive 1 that add to negative 2. No, factors of one. Well, there's there's only two factors of one, huh? One and one, right? Okay. And if it's going to multiply to give us a positive, it's going to have to be positive, positive, or negative, negative, and we want it to add to negative two. Which one's it going to be? Okay, so we can speed factor this, and we can go like this. Negative one is our A term. We got X and X. We know our signs need to be negative, negative, and there's only one set of factors. It's going to be one and one, what numbers make the groups equal to zero? One and, well, that's it, just one, right? There's only one. So that this would be x-intercept one comma zero. And if we're looking at this parabola right here, this is going to be a parabola that has a vertex at 1, 0, opening down. Maximum vertex at 1, 0, opening down, because A is <laughs> negative. Does that make sense? Right? And that was pretty easy to do factoring, right? Well. Okay. <laughs> what I'd like you to do is I want you to identify the A, the B, and the C. And you're going to use this level of the quadratic right here. And then I want you to do quadratic formula. And I'll put some steps up as we go along. Okay? 
So get started. You're going to solve this using quadratic and see if you can come up with the same thing. Use number two as a pattern for what we did. All right, give it a try. See what you can do. And I'll put some steps up for you, but you're going to get going on this. Okay, here's your ABC. Next up is how you should start the problem. Okay, start your problem with open parentheses in your quadratic formula like that. Okay. I'll do some putting in numbers and then simplifying the first level on the next one. All right. Numbers in place, first level of simplification should have looked like that right there. Okay, keep going. It's a little weird to you, but that's actually right, right there. Okay. Got your calculator? Yes, sir. Got your calculator? What is the square root of zero? Zero, right? What number times itself gives you zero? It's zero, right? Okay. So then we're talking about x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 0 divided by negative 2. Well, do I really need to write plus or minus 0? Okay, all right. So then what we're talking about is, what we're talking about is, is x is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 2. What's negative 2 divided by negative 2? 1. X-intercept. There's only one of them. 1, comma, 0. Same thing that we got right there. Make sense? It's just a different way of finding it. But again, I'm going to make the case that I think if you can factor it, it's going to be easier than doing it this way. Yes, sir. The top part of what? Of number four? Yeah, so this 2 squared right here is 4. And then this is a math problem. I got to do multiplication. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. This is negative 4. 4 plus negative 4, or 4 minus 4, is 0. Okay, now... I just want to talk about something real quick on number five, okay? So for these questions, okay, what I'm going to have you do, because they're not necessarily designed entirely for what we're doing here, but let's do this. So what I want you to do is I want you to move these to the left to set your quadratic equal to zero. So let's rewrite our quadratic for number five right here by moving these terms to the left. Go ahead and do that right now. Alex. Okay, so then you should have negative 2x squared, and then we're going to minus 4x, which we're going to minus off of the 3x. That's going to leave us with negative x plus 15. I do. Is equal to zero. You can say negative one x. That's fine. I'll I don't, by one don't write it, but say it. That's fine. Oh, he wrote it. I, I wrote he wrote it. it. Now keep in mind, this is an a doesn't equal one factoring problem. So we're going to have to do either a fraction or reverse box method. Which, if you need extra work to do factoring, do that on a separate piece of paper. Okay. So you're going to do this question by factoring over here. So write by factoring, okay? And then you're going to take this level of the problem over here, and you're going to do same as number five, and this is going to be by quadratic formula. Okay, and so you're going to want your A equals, B equals, and C equals, which you will get 
from this level of the problem right here. And so as part of your homework, you're going to finish five and six, which is essentially doing five the second way. You're going to factor this, and you're going to do it with quadratic formula over here. What's that? Okay, hold on. Shh. Hold on. Shh. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> no. You did something wrong. Okay. This is this is factorable, and so there are rational solutions, and so you can do this one. Okay. We're going to leave that one for you to do because I've given you two patterns to work with. If you don't know how to factor... A does not equal 1. Then go back and look at lesson 6.3. Okay. Now, let's go to the back side. Let's take a look at number 7. Okay. Okay, number 7. Let's get our 4x over to the left to keep our x squared positive. So if we rewrite this one, it's going to look like this. x squared minus 4x minus 9 equals 0. Well, this is a nice a equals 1 problem, right? Yeah. So let's talk about factors of negative 9. So one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. So factors of negative 9 that are going to subtract to give us negative 4. Yeah, 9 is not divisible by 5. Good try, Joseph. Good try. I, I think. I'll, I'll be encouraging. Good try. Oh, 6 times 4. 6 times 4? Yeah. No, 6 minus Six. Okay. Oh, yeah, six minus two, but six times two is not nine, it's twelve. So yeah, good try. There is none. Okay. Bad news, not factorable. Yeah. <laughs> then we only have one option, and that is quadratic formula. Okay? <clears throat> so when it's not factorable, you need an A equals, a B equals, and a C equals. Okay, let's do this in quadratic formula. Ready go. Okay, set up your problem. Should have looked like this to start. Okay, let's do some plugging in and simplifying and see where we get. By having the parentheses in this problem, you're less likely to make the sign errors of not changing the first term to a positive and missing that it's negative 4 squared as opposed to negative. 4 squared, it's negative 4 squared, which means negative 4 times negative 4, right? And so we get here. Is everybody good here? Okay, let's keep going. So x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of what? 52 divided by 2. Now we have a problem. Because 52 is not a perfect square. Okay, now we talked about in geometry, so you all have done this, and some of you in Algebra 1, simplifying square roots by using perfect square factors, like the square root of 4 times 13. That's 52. Yeah. Which can be the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. Which would simplify to x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 root 13 divided by 2. If you don't know how to simplify square roots, go back and review that. Look up a video on YouTube, simplifying square root, irrational square roots. Okay? You're going to have to look this one up if you don't know how to do it. We've reviewed this a couple times. I don't have time to reteach it today. You can go back and look it up. Simplifying non-perfect square roots. Okay? And then, remember we talked about when you have 
a binomial on top of a single term, you can simplify it as long as you can simplify both terms. And when we reviewed this in geometry, we talked about outsides cancel with outsides and insides only cancel with insides. And so this could be simplified like that and like that. And so our answer is going to be x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. Or if we wanted to write it as x-intercepts like we've been doing, it would be 2 plus the square root of 13, comma, 0, and 2 minus the square root of 13, comma, 0. That's the best we can do. Those are irrational square roots. Now, they are on the x-axis. If you take and plug this into Desmos or this into Desmos, you will see where these cross. Okay, you'll see where those cross. In fact, I would highly encourage you to do that so that you get an idea of what that looks like. Questions on that one? So when you don't have a perfect square, that's because you have an unfactorable trinomial. In this case, we have irrational square roots. This is going to this, this be a number that goes on forever and ever, a decimal number that doesn't repeat and doesn't end. Okay, one more to look at. Let's go to number 11. Okay, ready? Let's quadratic formula these because, in fact, you can make this note actually... You can make this note right up here. 7 through 12 are not factorable. And so 7 through 12, as part of your homework, along with the 5 and 6 from the first page, all these are going to be done with quadratic formula. So we got one more problem to do with quadratic formula, and that's number 11. So let's do an A equals... B equals and C equals, and then you start working quadratic formula down for number 11. Ready, go. Here's the setup of your problem right here. Now plug and do some simplifying. Okay, next step you should have gotten to was here. So then we get x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of what? Negative 20 all over negative 6. <clears throat> what two of the exact same numbers can we multiply to get negative 20? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can't. One's positive and one's negative. And so this creates a problem. Wait, we're not done. You're still taking a few notes. Okay. This creates a problem for us because we can't take a negative square root. Dot, dot, dot. Yet your problems will stop here for now until Thursday. Okay, the rest that we didn't do is all homework, okay? Okay, hasta la vista. Thank you.